In our final movie on styling in hair, we're going to use end constraints to pull the hair back. We could do similar things using passive colliders, but that would be much more difficult because we would have to create a collision object that deformed so that it could pull the hair back. So using constraints is actually going to be easier. However, I want to caution you that the process is not fault tolerant and there may be issues if you do not exactly follow the steps as I do them here. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is to turn off the stickiness on this hair because currently we've got stickiness so that it will stay put. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Selecting the strokes, go to the attribute editor, go to the hair system shape node, and in the collisions section, we wanna set that stickiness back down to zero. Okay, okay, now the next thing we need to do is to select the endpoints of the start curves like we did before. I'll go into the end hair menu, and choose Convert Selection to Start Curve and CVs. And now that we've done that, I'm going to hide these strokes so that we're not distracted by those. And now, in fact, both sets of curves are visible. We've got the Start Curve and CVs selected, but the Output Curves are also visible at the same time. Okay, next thing to do is to add the constraint. Go to the End Constraint menu and choose Transform. It'll have to think about it for a moment, and when it's finished, the transform constraint will be added, and you will see that there are points at the end of all of these curves, and we're back in object mode now. Inside the character, you will see that locator, and that is how we can change the position of the transform constraint. However, to do that, the best way to do it is actually in interactive playback mode. If you just move the constraint currently now, then very strange things may happen and the hair may jump around and you may have major issues. So what you need to do is to use interactive playback. I'm going to increase the timeline to the full 600 frames and grab the move tool and go into the end solver menu and choose interactive playback. Then I can grab that move manipulator and pull it backward and the hair goes with it. Don't pull it too far because you can actually stretch the hair. Even though we've got a high stretch resistance, if I take this back too far, I can actually change the length of the hair. So don't want to do that. The other thing I want to do is to bring all these hairs to a point. So I can just grab the scale tool while interactive playback is still running and then scale all those points down. Okay, so now I've basically positioned the hair where I need it to be. I can go ahead and press stop. And I just want to make sure that I have the hair strokes selected. So I need to go into the outliner because they're currently hidden. Select PFX hair one. And I want to set the start curves to the current output position. Okay, so go back into N hair and select N hair, set start position from current. And has to think about it for a moment. And now both sets of curves are coincident. And we can rewind. And if we press play now, the hair won't move much because it's still constrained. We can disable that constraint. So I can select the dynamic constraint node in the outliner. And then in the channel box, I can set enable to zero. And then press play. Okay, so that looks pretty good. The next thing I want to do is to turn the stickiness back on. And then finally, I want to reset the start position one more time so that the hair will settle down. So I'll rewind. And then once again, go to the PFX hair node, control A attributes, and turn the stickiness back up again, and then let it play through. When the simulation has settled down the way that I want it, then I can go ahead and set the start position once again. However, in my tests, I noticed a bug in which it did not actually work when I did it a second time, unless I made both sets of curves visible. So that appeared to be a bug. I'm not sure if it really was, but that's the experience that I had. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that both sets of curves are visible. In hair, display, current, and start. And then once again, with PFX hair one selected, go back up into in hair, set start position from current. Very good. So now that should stay put pretty well. Rewind, and it seems okay. And then the last thing I want to do, just to make sure that that hair doesn't move, is to go back into the Attribute Editor and turn on Start Curve Attract. So select PFX Hair 1 again, go back into the Attribute Editor. In the Dynamic Properties section, 
start curve attract and I'll turn that up. And if I want to really make sure this is, you know, hairspray down and won't move, I can increase the attraction scale so that that's uniform. And then we'll turn our strokes back on again and then press play. And the hair is dynamic. It moved a little bit, but it's basically been, you know, hairsprayed in place so it won't move much. It'll take a lot of force of wind or something to get it moving because we've got stickiness as well as start curve attract enabled. All right, so that is the process for using constraints. A bit of an involved process, admittedly, and there are a lot of pitfalls involved there, including that issue in which both sets of curves needed to be visible in order to set the start position correctly. If the output curves are hidden, then you will not be able to set the start curves to the output curves. So that's just a caveat to be aware of. And that concludes our chapter on styling in hair.